Gene mentioned voting. And I want to encourage you, if you have not voted already, make sure you do it. I don't vote early. I always vote Tuesday. I do just what my dad did. I follow in his footsteps. I go to the polls. I, I like doing that. And I'm going to be working it anyway, so what difference does it make? <laughs> but I want you to vote. And I want you to understand something greatly. Whether it turns out the way you want it or not, God is still on the throne. I've got a way that I want it to turn out. Okay? I'll be honest with you, I do. But, no matter what happens, I promise you, God is not going to wake up Wednesday morning and go, whoa, that surprised me. Because He already knows. Our challenge is to be faithful. To be people who are always faithful to the Lord. No matter who's in office, wherever they're at. We have to be prepared to be servants of God. And occasionally, that means standing and fighting for what we believe. Being faithful to God. We're going to sing an extra song. Four songs on one Sunday from the hymnal. I mean, wow! We are going to sing song 530, Battle Hymn of the Republic. I challenge you to be faithful to the Lord in all things. 530. on now. <laughs> I need you to take your blue songbook and turn to page 492. Not song 492, but page 492. Little bitty letters on the bottom and the back. I told you we were going to do two things different. Well, this is the second thing. We are going to say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only begotten Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, and was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence He shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Thank you for indulging me in that. This is where we are at this morning. We are going to take a quick look, and by quick, I mean you should be out of here before noon. <laughs> A quick look at this document, at this creed here. Now to begin with, we all know that while this is called the Apostles' Creed, no apostle actually wrote this creed. None of them have their names recorded with it, as Scripture does. Um, it does not appear to date anywhere close from the time of the Apostles. If you do research on this, the first time you see it recorded is the Council of Milan in 390 A.D. Now I know the Apostle John lived to be a ripe old age. I'm not going to give him credit for 390 years. 
But while this is not written by the apostles, I believe it is totally supported by Scripture. And as we look at this, we are going to look at a few, just a few of the Scriptures. The first line, for instance, we all know Genesis 1.1. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. We all know that. We know God created. If you miss God as Creator, then most of the rest of the creed will mean nothing to you. You have to start with Him where He is and who He is. He is Creator. Everything has to fall into place beginning with God and going through. We're not going to get into timelines here. As you all know, I, I do believe in a literal six-day creation. But God has to be Creator. Going on, Jesus is the only Son of God. Now, I will take nothing away from the fact that we are brothers and sisters adopted into the Lord's family. But we are adopted in. Jesus is the only begotten of the Father. He is the only true Son of the Father. The rest of us, we're adopted. You know what that means? It means we were chosen. We were picked. God said, I want you. And you know what? He said, I want me too. And I like that. I like the fact that we are adopted in and chosen. That means we are part of a family forever. Jesus was born of a virgin. He did suffer death for us and was buried and did rise again. We find all of this information in God's Word. We can have confidence that when we reach the time of death, Christ has already been through it and we have nothing to fear. We're not alone even as we go through that. I'd like you to look at Philippians 2, 5 through 8 with me. Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus, who being in the form of God, did not consider it robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation, taking the form of a bondservant, and coming in the likeness of men, and being found in appearance as a man, he humbled himself, and became obedient to the point of death, even the death of of the cross. Christ came to earth. The Creator of everything came and walked on soil and rocks and water. He came. And as we've talked about before, He learned what hunger was. He learned what being tired was. Our Savior experienced what we do each and every day so that He knows when He goes before the Father and says, they're mine. They're washed by my blood. I know the mistake that He has made, but He's mine. I've been there. I know what he's going through. And they're mine. Jesus experienced that. Now, the next part, he ascended into hell. And, you know, I often like quoting famous people and stuff like that. I'm quoting myself here now. I just want you to know that. I'm quoting myself from our Tuesday night Bible study. 
We are to choose our eternal destiny while we live. Jesus showed his power over death and sin to those who have perished before. Demons, and I believe the lost, but they could only see it was too late for them to change their destiny. The time for choosing salvation, the time for choosing to be faithful to the Lord is while we live. Everyone will someday cry, Jesus is Lord. Some will do it when it's too late to make a choice otherwise, though. I'd like you to look now, continuing in Philippians 2, 9 through 11. Therefore God also has highly exalted Him and given Him the name which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow, <coughs> of those of heaven and of those on earth and of those under the earth, and that every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of the Father. Now I want to share this with you. Whether you believe Jesus spoke to the lost or not, we know they could do nothing but acknowledge the power of our Lord. We know, as I said, in the end, everyone will acknowledge Jesus as Lord. Some will do it as they're being sent away for an eternity without Him. Some will do it as they walk through the pearly gates of joy forever. But everyone will know who the Lord is. No one's going to get any place for eternity and go, Jesus is who? There will be no question. Jesus is Lord. I do want to share, however, that our salvation does not depend on whether we believe Jesus went and spoke to the lost. I think he did. I think we can see in Scripture where he did. But if you go, I don't think so. We can still spend eternity together. We can still be in heaven together forever. Because our salvation depends on Jesus Christ, on His work. Our salvation depends on what He did for us. We can disagree on things. Well, I imagine there's some people out there, and I'm just throwing this out, who actually believe green stuff can be a food. I'm just throwing that out there. We can still enjoy heaven together. Broccoli will probably taste real, pretty much like a really good piece of barbecued chicken. Maybe not. <laughs> I don't know that for certain. But we can still spend together forever. Even if we disagree on little points. Because Christ said, My death is is sufficient for you. Now to continue on, Jesus is at the right hand of the Father. He is waiting for the command to come back for us. And when He does, then will come the end times. As we see in part of Revelation, followed by the judgment, the rewards for believers, the internal judgment on those that don't know Him, that's all future from today. That's all going to happen. He is coming back. He is coming back for each and every believer. Look with me at Acts 1, 9-11. <clears throat> now when he had spoken these things while they watched he was taken up 
and a cloud received him out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly toward heaven as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, who said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing into heaven? This same Jesus who was taking up from you into heaven will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. Jesus is coming back the same way he left. I don't know exactly what that looked like. I imagine he stood there talking to the hem and then ever so slowly his body levitated up and he went into the clouds and they just stood staring. They had just seen the one who they knew was dead come back to life, spend 40 days with them, be with them, eat with them, share with them, promise them the Comforter is coming, and now he's gone again. I, I don't have any trouble believing they were staring going, okay, how soon? Or do you going to touch heaven then come right back right now? They expected it soon. We expect it soon. I don't have to finish the sermon. <laughs> God knows the time. I don't. But He is coming back the same way for His people. For us. For His church. Going on in this, we have faith in the Holy Spirit that indwells all believers. He's the third member of the Trinity. Now when we say third member of the Trinity, we only use the position third because when you see Him, it's Father, Son, Holy Spirit. That's the way Scripture lists Him. That's why He's third. He is no less important. He is no less God. Jesus promised to send us the Comforter the teacher. Look at John 16, 7 with me. <clears throat> John 16, 7. Jesus says, Nevertheless, I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the Helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. I imagine being a person that if I am talking to the very Son of God, I'm pretty comfortable doing that. Jesus says, I've got a better plan. And I will tell you, if it's God's plan, it's always better than ours. Jesus says, I've got a plan. I'm going. But I am not going to leave you alone. The Holy Spirit will come he will dwell with you. He will lead you. He will guide you in all teachings. And we have that. And we have the Holy Spirit dwelling in everyone who knows the Lord. But it took Jesus leaving for that to happen. Then we go on to the Holy Christian Church, or as the original says, the Holy Catholic Church. Now, when I use the word Catholic here, and it says so in the songbook, the word Catholic means universal. We are part of one universal church serving the Lord. Look with me at Ephesians 5, a longer passage here. Ephesians 5 25 through 32. Now, I'm not going to go into husbands and wives here, but they are listed. Ephesians 5, 25 through 32. Husbands, loved your, love your wives just as Christ also loved the church and gave Himself for her, that He might sanctify and cleanse her with the washing of water by the Word, that He might present her to Himself a glorious church, 
not having spot or wrinkle or any such thing, but that she should be holy and without blemish. So husbands ought to love their own wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it, just as the Lord does the church. For we are members of his body, of his flesh, and of his bones. For this reason a man shall leave his father and mother and shall be joined to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak concerning Christ and the church. The best, the most wholesome example Jesus could give of the relationship between Himself and the church is a husband and a wife. When He looked over the whole world, He saw that as the most perfect example of His relationship to the church. We should cherish our partners. Husbands are to love their wives. Wives, you're supposed to also love your husbands back. Just thought I'd share that. <laughs> but we should cherish and love our partners. The example here, again, Jesus uses, looking through the whole world, He didn't say, look at, look at the groundhogs. He said, look at husband and wives. I was trying to think real fast of an animal that was together for forever. I don't know for certain on groundhogs. Canadian, yeah, thank you. Canadian geese, yes, thank you. Therefore, they're together for forever. We are to love our spouse that way because that's the way Christ loves the church. And he gave himself for the church. Continuing on, we believe we should have fellowship together. We understand our sins are forgiven and that someday we will get new bodies fit for eternity. I got two passages that I'd like us to look at here. John 5.24 and then we're going to go into Romans. But John 5.24 reads, Most assuredly I say to you, he who hears my word and believes in him who sent me <coughs> has everlasting life and shall not come into judgment, but has passed from death into life. And then two verses that I believe we're very familiar with. Romans 5, 8, and 9. Romans 5, 8, and 9 read, but God demonstrates His own love toward us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Much more than having been justified by His blood, we shall be saved from wrath through Him. We are going at this time to partake of communion. A time to remember the body and blood our Lord shed for us. And I'm going to ask the deacons to come forward at this time. So this morning, a simple creed, but a creed that holds so much to it. Again, based on Scripture, ending with Christ coming back for His church. He is returning. The good news is all who know Jesus will go with Him. The bad news is there's going to be a lot of people left behind. And that will not be a good time. We need to live lives showing who our Lord is and being faithful to Him and understanding that He does love us enough to go and die for us. 
And that is true love. <clears throat> we are singing a song. Number 106. Tell me the story of Jesus. And as we sing this song, if you do not know Jesus, if you do not know the story of what He has done, then I invite you to let me show Him to you today. 106, all three verses. The challenge to live for Him. You heard me say vote. Um, I'm not going to tell you how to vote, but uh, you might want to vote thinking about the stand that our Lord takes. And I'm going to share, I believe we have a pro-life God. Join me as we close in prayer. Father, thank You for loving us. Thank You for calling us to be Your servants here. May You bless us with wisdom, with power, with humility and braveness. Thank You, Father, for being with us always. In the name of Jesus, Amen.